Hello everybody and welcome back to Virtual Reality on the Gamer Muscle YouTube channel where we're jumping into the Oculus Rift Oculus Core 2.0 to talk about Oculus Dash. Now this came out yesterday on the beta branch of the Oculus Rift. So if you go into your Oculus Rift store, you sign into the beta branch, restart the Oculus application, you'll be able to load into this and check it out for yourself. But in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about some of the main features of the Oculus Dash and the new Oculus home environment. What's good, what, what's a little bit buggy, and uh, what we think of it so far. So let's first get Oculus Dash on the screen because it's absolutely superb. Press the Oculus button, and here we go. We've now got Oculus Dash, which is the new way to access your, your programs, your games, and uh, your nonsense that you like to do in virtual reality. Now, of course, the, the initial thing is you, you can just launch stuff, so that's fantastic, that's really nice. It's nicely clear, clearly presented, uh, the, the, the basic UI for what's installed. There's more. There's better options for how to access your, your applications and what you've got and what's on the store. It's a lot better to use at a basic functional level than how the Oculus Store used to work in VR. But that's not really the exciting part of it. What's exciting, or what I believe to be the most exciting part of Oculus Dash is the fact that you've now got Oculus Desktop and you can go to your desktop monitors. There we go. <laughs> VR Inception. That looks uh, actually looks quite cool. You can go to your monitors. I've got two monitors on my computer here. We'll go to monitors two because that's a bit more functional. And you can now fully access your desktop in VR. Um, we've got we've got B Sim Racing and uh, Vasaro have a rather nice VR sim rig that we're just looking at there. Um, so you can just browse websites. We're using the D-pad. Let's see if I can get it on the webcam. Using the D-pad to move the scroll bar up and down. We can obviously click on it with the mouse, drag it up and down. You can uh, click on the browser bar, go to new tabs. You know, you've got all the, the ability to control things at a basic level. And if you want to type something, click that. You then click on the keyboard. And you get a keyboard and you can go to, let's hope no erotic websites pop up here. <laughs> Reddit.com, enter. So you can you, you can use your computer using the touchpad. Uh, using, the touch, using the hand controllers and within virtual reality. And it's really seamless, and I have to say, as I use both the Oculus Rift and the, the Vive, I like both the devices for different reasons, but I have to say, at this point in time, this is unequivocally the best implemented, easiest to use, and smoothest desktop mirror application. And, and I say it's even, it's even better than stuff like virtual desktop. And I'll tell you why. This is, well, let's go to the next level of incredible here. What's absolutely amazing is this functionality. We can get a window and we can hold the grip button with the with the uh, grip here. I'm just looking through the nose hole to see my webcam, which is 10 meters away. Um, grip button, point it on the window and look at that. We've just pulled Reddit out of the TV into VR. That's mind blowing to me. I know, I know you might say that's a little bit gimmicky. What's the point? I'll tell you what the point is in a minute. Um, but once you've grabbed it out of your desktop, you can then position it wherever you want in your in your VR space. They've got a nice locking system which curves the screen around that that grid. So if you want to position it in front of you, it, use it more as a 2D screen, you can do so. But if you want to put it anywhere, you can just you know you can scale it using the D-pad here, the analog stick, distance. And scale and you can position it and once you've positioned it so let's say we put this here let's say we, we can't escape reddit the progress the procrastination tool of the universe is now in us in virtual reality there is no escape so we'll position this that's quite legible there and we'll now pin it now when i take turn off oculus dash by pushing the oculus button we have a window in vr that, that is there follows us around and it's in all applications this is very much like the steam compositor those of you familiar with uh steam vr and uh what's really nice about that is it's 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 application agnostic it doesn't know it doesn't know what 
application is running, it's just there. So say you're doing um, art programs or you know, you're making something in, in, in uh, medium, sculpting, and you want a, a reference image, instead of having to depend on the software to implement a uh, funky way of doing it, you could just have your reference image in VR. Say, like what I do, I do a lot of uh, driving simulator streaming. Say you do that, what I do is I grab my YouTube chat and I, let's put this on the table. I normally grab my YouTube chat and I will I will position it. So let's, you've got to push the octopus dash, grab it here, we'll position it right in the center. I actually use my face as a guide here. It can be a little bit hard to get the precision of the placement of the window 100% spot on if you're, you know, if you want to, what I do is line it exactly on the steering wheel. That could be a little bit finicky at the moment. But in general, say I just wanted to put, position it right in the middle. It is still, there it goes, it's pinned. So now, if I do this, it will center onto me as well. So when I'm using my streaming, I would have a chat window there and I can play my game, do my driving, check the chat room, and uh, you know, it's, it's just awesome. It's absolutely incredible. It's just really nice functionality. Now you can have, as well, multiple windows. It's not completely limited. So you can have multiple desktops if you want to go crazy. <laughs> you can totally desktop yourself to death. And just, uh, you know, hang on. Okay, just duplicate the same one. You can get pretty bananas. There is a limit. What what happens is, um, eventually it gets to a point where it can't do any more windows without slowing down. And uh, oh, it's going to come out. <laughs> yeah, it gets to a point where you can't have any more windows. And it either takes the windows off or it gives you a, a performance warning. In all honesty, I don't think you're ever going to want more than a couple of windows anyway. You know, you'd normally just have, a, 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 say, something for reference, a chat room. Maybe you've got a video you, you're watching in the background on, on your desktop. Maybe you just want to access your computer and do something, uh, type a message to someone in Windows without having to take your headset off. Or um, you can actually use game interfaces. Um, Project Cars 2, for example, which we do a lot of streaming of, you can use this with your headset on, get your touch controllers, and you can select your options and choose tracks and cars if you want to. Personally, I, I find with games that are designed around a mouse and keyboard, you, you know, you will find a mouse and keyboard works better for the UI, but it's there as an option. And it does mean if you're stood up like I am now and you're doing sort of room scale VR, you don't have to take your headset off as much because you can access the bulk of your desktop if you need to change a setting quickly. Um, I, if I need to adjust audio with my desktop quickly, you could just bring it up. We've got all the windows behind us. So if I needed to just change the microphone setting, the uh, volume level, I could select that, I could dra drag it, I can click on the levels, you, you know. basic window stuff you can do quite nicely. Now I was going to take a look at the other features that's come with Rift Core 2.0 but uh, this video is already coming up to 10 minutes long so we'll, I think we'll save that for a different video and this this is just the Dash, <laughs> the Dash 2.0 video. Um, absolutely amazing though and just really exciting. I think this shows the movement that VR is going in. We've seen this kind of solution happen with OpenVR, the Microsoft VR started to do this kind of uh, Windows interface within VR, so you don't have to keep taking your headset off. And I think VR is starting to establish itself as its own as its own UI interactive experience. And I think where, where this is especially exciting is once you remove a computer out of the equation, which let's face it, that's where this is going, and you can have a headset you put on and you've got a full 360 degree desktop environment without the limitations of having to have a giant screen or multiple monitors all around you. It's all just in one unit. And it's just really exciting. And uh, August have done a fantastic job with this. Let me know what questions you've got in the comments if you want to know about anything, any specific uh, setups options or you know, anything you have a question about, drop it in the comments. If you like virtual reality, 
you like driving simulators, you like flight simulators, all that like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to give us a like. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in our next stream and chatting to you live, but until then, thanks for watching this, and goodbye. <laughs>